Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 with another Dreams Logic tutorial. Today we'll be looking at the Action Recorder. The Action Recorder is a super powerful gadget and it makes a lot of things easier. It does pretty much exactly what it says on the box, so in its simplest form it just records your actions. We'll start off with an example from the tweak menu. We'll open up the wall tweaks here and turn the color saturation all the way up. Now if we shift select the Action Recorder we'll pop into record mode. You'll see the imp changes from your own to a little recording dot, so you'll know it's ready to go. We'll head over here and grab the color bar and just move that around so we make a full circle, like so. And we'll go and stop the recording here with the button on the right. You'll see the recording bar up the top is now filled up a bit, meaning it's recorded something for that period of time. Just note that the bar extends past this point, so the end of this recording bar is not the limit of the recording time. If we jump into play mode now with our recording done, you can see my exact actions are played back. If you look closely at the action recorder icon, you'll see the bar going across it which indicates how far through the recording is. Now if we jump back into record mode, you can see that the box has a texture over it, and so does the colour wheel on the tweak menu. This texture indicates that the action recorder has recorded something for this item or tweak menu. You might think that this will just record over the top of what we've already done if we were to record something else here, but the action recorders can record multiple actions on the same chip. If we are to grab another tweak menu bar here, say the glow, and record it again like so, you'll see the recording bar at the top is actually going over the already recorded spot. So if we play again now, you'll see that it's not just recorded as changing the colour, but it's also the brightness, and it'll play those back at the same time. You can combine a whole heap of actions into one action recorder and make some really cool effects. That's how I made the title screen for these videos. I just got out an action recorder and recorded the colour changing, like I have here, and this combined with a few other simple logic bits, I got it to turn the glow on and off. We can of course record more than just tweak menu changes. We can also record actual movements of items in the scene, along with basically any other action you can think of. If we go back into record mode again and drag this block around, you'll see that it records the movement of the block that we make, shown by this line. If we play this back again now and hover over the block, you can see the path that it will take. And once it gets up to the point where we recorded the movement, it'll play it back. You can use these for crude animations, so if you want a door to slam shut, you can record your imp slamming the door shut and activate the action recorder at the time you want with a trigger zone, for example. If you haven't seen the video on trigger zones, that was tutorial number two, and I'd recommend you go back and watch that if you don't understand how this would be done. If we pop into the tweak menu for the action recorder, you can see at the top we've got the playback mode options. Just note that the recording will immediately start playing if the gadget has nothing plugged into it, so if you want to delay the recording, plug a wire into it that's not turned on, and then activate that wire when you want the recording to start. The first playback option is once, this plays back the recording once when it receives an input signal and will continue playing whether it loses power or not. The second is sustain. This will play back the recording as long as it has power to the input port and will stop playing if it loses power. It'll continue from the time it's stopped if it gets power back. The next is loop, which will do the same as sustain, but it'll jump back to the start of the recording once it's finished instead of stopping. And finally is ping pong. This will start playing the recording backwards once it hits the end of the recording, and will start playing forwards again when it hits the start. There's also the playback speed, which increases or decreases how fast the recording will play back. Then there's the amplification slider, which increases and decreases the size of the animation you've recorded. So you can see here when I change it, it changes how large the movement of the cube is. The springiness slider defines how much bounce there is at the end of an animation so the cube won't stop dead at the end of the line if you turn this up a bit. It'll bounce over the end point slightly and then come back to its finishing position. You can also reverse the animation. Now if you turn on travel, this will keep the animated object at the point where the animation ends after it finishes. This would be handy if you recorded a character walking down the street and want to use the same recording again and again to make the character walk further and further. Turning this on will make the character start the next playback of the recording from the point where the last playback finished. So the character will continue walking down the street rather than snapping back to the start and re-walking over the same spot. 
The next one is keep changes. Now this is similar to travel in that it will keep the animated object at the point where the animation ends, but if you play back the recording it'll jump back to the start point and walk over the same ground. You'd use this if you wanted to stop a walking character at the end of its animation and not have it bounce straight back to the start. This button is on a number of the animation gadgets like the keyframe and it's very useful and you'll use this a lot if you're doing animations. Lastly is the on end trigger output, which just outputs a signal when the animation is completed for you to trigger your other logic bits with that you might have around. So if you have an animation play out where you don't want the player to have control of a character, when the animation finishes you could give the control back to the character with this output. That's all for today's video. I'll be covering more of the animation gadgets like the keyframe and how they interact with the timeline soon. I hope you're all well and see you next time.